Adobe recently updated After Effects and with the update came an update to the Roto Brush and this is Roto Brush version 3. And in this video, I'm going to test the new Roto Brush and see if it is any good and see if you should consider upgrading. So let's get into it. So this is my video footage inside of Adobe After Effects and purposely I've moved around a little bit to make this more complicated for Adobe After Effects. Then I'm going to select this video. We'll go into the Roto Brush icon and double click the video. Then I'm just going to zoom out to fit. I'm going to go to the first frame. I'm going to go to brushes. And if you can't see brushes, then go to window. Make sure brushes is ticked and then find it on the right of After Effects. So my brushes is just there. So I'm just going to increase the diameter and I'm just going to paint within myself like this. As you can see, the background has been included. So I'm going to hold option on my keyboard and paint over the background to remove that. It's also included this bit. I don't want that. So I'm going to remove that. And if we zoom in, you can see it's included this part of the background and taken away this part of my shoulder. So I'm going to add that back in. And once you are pretty happy with how that looks, you can just press the space bar to play and watch this analyze frame by frame. Now in the previous versions of Roto Brush, so one and two, by now it probably would have slipped up and I would have to go back in and make an adjustment. But so far on version three, it's doing a great job at following the movement. Now I've added a little complication into the shot and I've added this harsh backlight just up here to create this really harsh light. Now it is helping me over here because I've got a nice hair light. However, when I interact with the light, it is going to make that a little bit more difficult. So it's interesting to see how well After Effects is doing in this example. Now it's worth going through and checking this to make sure you're happy. You can also select this red toggle alpha overlay button just to double check your work. Everything red will be removed and everything in color is going to stay. So if we now go back to composition and play this back, you can see just how clean of a job this has done. Now, as I mentioned, because of this harsh backlight on my hair, there are some imperfections up here. So I am just going to go to the very beginning. I'm going to go to the rotor brush tool again. Then I'll drag down to reveal the refine edge tool. Then I'll double click the video again. I'm going to go into my brushes and increase the diameter. And I'm just going to draw an edge around my beard and around my hair. So the refine edge tool is going to go in and this is really great at those specific details. So as you can see, it's catching the edge of my hair really nicely. So everything white is going to be kept and everything black is going to be removed. So you can see there's a little bit of gray up here where it's struggling with that backlight a little bit. However, it's still doing a much better job than the previous versions of the rotor brush would. Great. Now I'm just going to stop this for now, just because this is taking a while. My computer's being slow today. So if we go back to the main composition and we play back what we've analyzed so far, if we now zoom in on the hair and we play this back, you can see it has done a much better job. There are some imperfections, but if you were to compare that to a previous version of Roto Brush, this has done a much better job. It's done that much of a good job that I could probably go layer new solid, place a solid color behind myself. And you can see that is pretty clean. Now, if I go into the video and I go into the Roto Brush tool, I can make a few adjustments. So if I go to the edge, I can increase or decrease the feather. So if I pull that down to zero, it's going to be a harsh edge. And as you can see, not quite great. If we increase the feather to a much higher number, it's really going to soften off that edge. But there is a danger that it might become overly soft on the edges. So generally, I try to keep this down towards five, ten, somewhere in that area. Then you've got contrast and this is just going to be the contrast on the edge. So again, if I pull all the way up, you can see we've got a hard edge. And if I go down to zero, you can see it's going to be a very soft edge. So between feather and contrast, you can really help to smoothen out those edges. The problem is this looks a bit smudgy at the moment. So I am just going to pull that back up to around 60 or 70 just to define that edge a bit more. You can shift the edge a little bit. So if we pull it to a negative number, it will eat into the subject. And if we increase it, then it will go out. 
So you can see we've got the background here, but when we pull that to a negative number, so shift edge, it's going to eat back into our self. And this is really good if you're having a really hard job removing specific parts of the background. So you can see that has cleaned that up quite a lot just by shifting the edge. Then you've got these other settings, but let's go down to refine edge matte. So this is to do with the hair. So if we zoom into the hair and then go down to here, you've got smooth. So if we pull that all the way up, you can smooth the refine edge tool off. You can see just by increasing the smoothness, it does actually clean that up a lot for us. So this was before. And then if I increase the smoothness, it really helps just to clean up the edge. The problem is though, if you've got some frizzy hair or some fluff or something, then having that smooth edge might look a bit artificial. So be careful not to overdo smoothness. You've also got feathering and this is a very similar thing. It's just softening off the edge. So you can see if I zoom into my hair and I increase the feather to a really high number, it's just feathering that edge. So if I was you, if you're using feather, I would keep it really minimal. So I'm just going to keep that around 10 or 11. Contrast is similar to before. It's just going to help to define the edge or just soften the edge. I find a little bit of contrast is nice just to get that detail in, but you want to be very careful not to overdo it. And then again, we've got shift edge. So if we go to a minus number, it's going to go into yourself. And if you go to a positive number, it's going to go out. So if you're catching a little bit of the background, then go to a slight negative number of around negative 10 or 15, and it may help to clean up the edge. Now, the thing that you want to remember when you are using the Rotor Brush tool is you want to treat this like green screen. So in green screen, if I wanted to place myself in the middle of a sunny day and I was lighting myself with dark or colored lights, it doesn't matter how much of a good job the rotor brush and the rotoscoping process does, it's not going to blend because the lighting on the subject doesn't match the lighting in the scene. Now I'll show you exactly what I'm on about here. So if I go into layer new solid and rather than a purple solid, I go for a yellow solid. When I place myself onto this background, all of a sudden this doesn't quite work because we've got a yellow background. We should be seeing yellow light on myself, but I've got purple light appearing on myself. Now, instead of a yellow background, if I go for a purple background, so we go layer new solid and we change the color to this purple. Now, when I place myself on this background, it makes much more sense and this is much cleaner. So because the lighting on my face is matching the background color, it looks like the two marry up. This one thing is really important to remember when you were doing rotoscoping or you were doing any type of green screen work. Just placing somebody, just taking somebody out of a random shot and placing them onto a random background will produce subpar results. So be really intentional with your lighting and really think about where you are going to place the subject and on what background. Of course, though, if you were just going to create an effect like adding text behind the person, it doesn't matter so much. This is more to do with background replacement. So in summary, the update to the rotor brush is really powerful. It does a much better job than version two. Should you update? Yes, I would definitely recommend it. If you've got the computer power and you can update to the latest version of After Effects, then I would definitely recommend it because the rotor brush version three is great.